everyone, I'm Judy Garcia. I'm the career counselor liaison for the College of Science. And this is actually the first in a series of one-on-one -on -one informational interviews with SJSU alumni. So the, I want to uh, welcome Eric Castro. And so my first, so I'd like him to first of all tell us all about himself and where he, and his current job and just kind of a brief overview. Eric? Sounds great. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so I'm from the Bay Area. I grew up in San Leandro, uh, just a small suburb, a small suburb just south of Oakland. And uh, I attended San Jose State for computer science. I graduated in the fall of 2014. So I was a four and a half year. Um, while I was there, uh, I was a part of the Delta Sigma Phi fraternity. Uh, I had a few internships. Uh, one at the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, and after that, I had two at Cisco Systems, uh, both uh, computer science slash engineering types of internships. Mm -hmm. uh, I won the computer science department scholarships uh, three years consecutively. I had a I was awarded a Google computer science uh, scholarship as well. Uh, after graduation, I went full-time at Cisco for about three years as an IT engineer. After three years there, I went to Google for a year as a software engineer in their geo organization, uh, which is responsible for my Google Maps. And then after that, I went to Robinhood, which is where I find myself now as a software engineer. So, um... My first question is, how did you decide to major in computer science? What made you decide to go in that direction? Uh, so uh, I remember being really young and just sort of one of my first memories was sitting on uh, my dad's lap as he had was operating just a computer in front of him. And I was drawn to that screen. And as I started to grow up a little bit, I sort of noticed myself tending to ask questions about just the world around me and how it worked. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I was really fascinated with was, were computers, because uh, I think I saw a lot of potential in the sort of impact one person could have with one uh, laptop, mm -hmm. really, really high leverage. Uh, so that was the direction I decided to pursue. And uh, as I kind of kept studying it and kept uh, learning more about it, uh, I, I found that, yeah, one person with one laptop really could have a lot of positive impact in the world. Uh, and the ability to do that just really, really fascinated me. And it's remained as a passion ever since. Yeah, that's great. Um, so tell me about how you found your internships. Um, and you mentioned, I think you had three, right? So, um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about how you landed those. How did you find out about them? Oh, man, that was <laughs> long-winded uh, long <laughs> story, just getting to the first one. Uh, it starts with just a lot of cold applying online um, applications to mm -hmm. some place that I want to be at, places like PlayStation, Google, et cetera. And, just couldn't really seem to draw a response out of uh, out of those applications, uh, which seems to kind of be the story that I think a lot of students are facing. Uh, yeah. So I went ahead and just kind of tried to take any alternate approach I could find. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, that was finding programs that supported students and tried to facilitate uh, internship opportunities between those students and in, uh, and partners that were offering internships. The one I found that worked uh, for me is a program called Inroads. I try to plug them anytime I can because they are a fantastic organization. Um, that's inroads.org. Uh, I applied like I would any other job, but for this program. And the application was more geared towards like 
behavioral things, tell me about yourself and what your ambitions are and less experience oriented stuff, which uh, kind of mm -hmm. like is where uh, I, I didn't have that experience yet. And uh, they uh, took a look at my application and um, before I even was in the program, they were already taking me through um, like resume workshops, uh, networking workshops, interview workshops. And then once they found a potential match for me, which was the Federal Reserve Bank uh, of San Francisco internship, uh, that's mm -hmm. when I was able to actually enroll the program. Uh, for the other two internships, the Cisco ones, those came from the scholarship. And uh, because I won the scholarship, I got put on a short list. And that short list came with a job, uh, a short list for the job interview, sorry. And that application for the scholarship I just did on a whim I was walking through Macquarie Hall saw on the bulletin board that there was uh, a scholarship application I was like oh well it doesn't hurt to apply right uh, and I did and turns out it went from getting a scholarship to also getting the internship opportunity which turned into the full-time opportunity um, so I guess point being here is if you know you find that cold applying isn't really working for you just seek out any other potential avenue that there is uh, to land any to land uh, experience, whether that's through special projects or or an internship. Yeah, that's good advice. That's really good advice. Um, okay, so my next question is, um, what would you say were your like key benefits of attending SJSU? Yeah, uh, great question. I'm a big homer for SJSU for a few reasons. Uh, one of the top ones, though, honestly, is affordability. It's like San Jose mm -hmm. State is such a great deal. Um, I'm the, I have you know, friends at private universities and I, I hear the, the cost of attendance and it is far beyond yeah. what I'm at San Jose State. Especially College. now, especially now, right? Especially now. Um, so affordability is a huge one for me. I, I didn't exactly come from uh, like the most well-off background, so that, mm -hmm. that's a lot. Uh, and, and on top of it being affordable, it is in the heart of Silicon Valley. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's, mm -hmm. even the schools that surround us uh, probably aren't in as central of a location as we are. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, it's true. all the you know, top, top industries, uh, tech companies in the area, uh, there is, uh, that's probably why it ended up at Cisco. Um, yeah. Even, you know, hot startups are in the area. San Francisco is throw throwaway. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think just being in the area, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity around you. And then uh, speaking of just the school itself, uh, it is a really diverse group of individuals uh, that I found myself around, um, both from you know, both different types of backgrounds and just different majors. Uh, and I think just being able to interact with that variety of people helped uh, build just a really diverse way of thinking for myself, um, mm -hmm. allowed me to kind of see things from a lot of perspectives. Uh, awesome. That's great. So um, I'm throwing in a question now with these interviews for this fall. So what skills and insights are you gaining from now working remotely? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I, <laughs> I want to say I'm like so much better at time management now and like, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> I'm really not. Uh, <laughs> Being at home, I, I kind of tend, can tend to lose focus sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so I'm still working on that. Uh, but I, I think one of the one of the key things, um, the insights uh, that I've recognized, at least about myself, is how much I really appreciate collaborating with people. Uh, I think we were just talking about this a little bit before we uh, started the interview. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the natural ability to collaborate with uh, with others uh, just isn't really there anymore, um, and that to have ad hoc conversations has kind of gone. Um, so uh, I've been trying to do my best to find ways to emulate that virtually, uh, just to kind of get that, uh, you know, to maintain that experience uh, to interact uh, with others, uh, because I, I learn a ton from the people that I get to work with, uh, whether that was in school, and even now, whether it's uh, someone much more senior than me, I, I can learn a lot uh, from someone uh, more junior than I as well. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I urge uh, students to try to maintain that. Um, oh, sorry. And then, oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yes. 
you know, with with these sort of stakes in the ground of like this is when work starts, this is when work's end, and maybe it translates to school. This is when school starts. This is when school ends. Those lines are blurred. Um, so uh, I find it really important to try to set those boundaries because it can be very easy to let one part of your day creep into the other and burnout starts to accumulate. So yeah. uh, just be mindful of when you're doing work and when you're not doing work. Uh, and, uh, something that I think we just spend some extra time paying attention. Yeah, that's good advice, actually. <laughs> um, so, how talk about a little bit about how you are networking today under these circumstances. So, so what do you find is really beneficial for you? Yeah, that is still something I'm figuring out, honestly, and it's yeah. something that a lot of us are still figuring out. Um, most of these things are virtual um but those interactions are a little bit more strained uh, a large part of it just happens through linkedin that has become a pretty popular platform for doing these and i've had uh students reach out to me on that platform i've had uh, i had one person who went through a boot camp and was like was interested in robin hood uh, she found my profile and she just actually guessed my email because he's First name dot last name at company dot com. Uh, <laughs> really impressed. Um, wow. So if I, if I am reached out to on LinkedIn. I especially from uh, SJSU uh, students. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to do my best to set aside some time to uh, yeah. with them. Uh, and I I've had a, a few, probably about four or five students during this time that I've uh, set some uh, one on one Zoom uh, video calls with. Uh, so that that platform is. Uh, big part of my networking these days and to you know any students watching this if you do want to reach out to me just uh, linkedin.com slash in slash Castro Eric uh, that's how you can find me and feel free to connect and reach out great awesome all right so to so my wrap-up question is what would be your advice for students today and going forward there's, a, I guess, a couple things here. Uh, the first, and I, I've said this a few times during the panels, but I really want to stress it because uh, I felt this way, and it seems like it's still something that is uh, on the back of uh, some uh, students' minds, as she is to you. But uh, you know, don't, don't be afraid of the competition out there, um, especially in the Bay Area. It seems like there's this uh, high volume of inbound from all these, quote unquote, top universities. Uh, Harvard, MIT, Ivy League, whatever it might be. Uh, I've had the great opportunity to work with people from a lot of those types of schools. And, you know, don't get me wrong, they're great people, they're really talented. Um, but I see nothing that says to me that SJSU students cannot perform at the same level they can. Um, you know, if we you know, just kind of put in the same level of work and maintain that work ethic, uh, there's no reason that you can't be where they are or even beyond that. Uh, so kind of, you know, get that uh, stigma, um, kind of work past that stigma because that is something that I have to work past. Um, and then uh, the second bit of advice would be if you're in an unapplied science, and I kind of feel that computer science is an unapplied science, um, try to keep in the back of your mind some sort of application for what you want to do with it. Um, because when I graduated in computer science, I was sort of spinning around in circles trying to figure out what I want to do with it. And it wasn't until recently that I realized it was because what I had learned was sort of how to use this tool, right? It was kind of like I learned how to use like a hammer and a screwdriver without really recognizing or understanding what I wanted to build with it. Uh, so I was kind of left questions uh, and that kind of made it difficult for me to see what my path forward looked like. Uh, eventually I found Robin Hood, which was a great intersection of interest for me, both uh, computer science engineering as well as finances and investing. Mm -hmm. And that sort of helped set a more well-defined path for me. Uh, so, you know, kind of try to keep in mind what it is that you want to do with the science that you are studying, whether it's research or private or public work, um, just to kind of keep some 
or like some good direction um, and help goal set so you could work towards those things. Um, and uh, I think I have, oh yeah, last one, um, be persistent. I know this is probably a cliche thing at this point, you know, kind of like a never give up, uh, but persistence really is key, especially when it comes into getting your foot in the door that uh, first time. Uh, really the only reason I was at Cisco for so long was because I kept failing like on-site technical interviews. Uh, and that period of time really stretched from like junior year of college to like that third year at Cisco. Uh, but throughout that time, I really understood what I wanted and where I wanted to go. So uh, those failures uh, just kind of turned into lessons for me, like reflections on why I failed, what areas I had problems in, and uh, what areas I need to kind of like uh, bolster. And um, just keeping that persistence and uh, trying to push forward uh, ultimately led to uh, some success. So as cliche as it sounds, yeah, really just don't give up. That's really good advice. All right. Eric, I want to thank you so much for meeting with me and for your advice and the best of luck to you this year. Going thanks forward. So much. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, thanks for, and, and thanks yeah. for allowing students to reach out to you too. That's great. Of course. Uh, feel free to attach my emails or contacts uh, for students to reach out if they want to, uh, to students out there. Uh, good luck with the semester. Uh, no, it's a tough time right now. Yeah. Alrighty. All right. Thank you so much. Really, really, Appreciate it and take good care.